talking about cover crops. That's one of the topics being discussed at the Fall Field Day. Joining us is John Holman, who is a cropping system specialist with K-State Research Extension based uh, here in Hayes. Uh, John, as we uh, talk about cover crops, that's over the last few years has been kind of a buzzword, but uh, today you shared with folks some research of how it's really kind of working uh, here in the, hi the High Plains region. Yeah, right. Um, and we've, we've had... It some good years, wet years, we've had some dry years, and, and depending on how much moisture you receive uh, really uh, affects how, how a cover crop can kind of fit in that system. So as we, as we look at this, is it simply a matter of in these dry arid conditions you really need to put a pencil to it or really know your objective if a cover crop is really going to be the best thing? Well, our data would support uh, it seems around a 50 bushel kind of wheat yield potential um, we can look to, to intensify that system a little bit. If you're looking at wheat yield potential of 50 bushel or less we really need to farm more conservatively and growing something in that fallow period uh, tends to hurt us economically and can actually make uh, in, in, in the extreme case where we're in a drought make a bad, bad situation even, even worse. So uh, you're a cropping system specialist, so you look at the whole system more than just uh, maybe year to year, but how it looks over, over, over a time frame. Let's maybe go back. This research has been done about a decade now. Uh, have there been some, some really learning points, or is it simple? The bottom line is water is the key. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, we started this work. We've been doing uh, con continuous uh, cover crop or uh, growing a, an annual forage crop. We've looked at both uh, for 10 years now in, 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 the, in the cropping uh, rotation. And, and so having that long-term data set uh, is, is very nice. In the, in the good years, we can intensify. In the bad years, it, it's really, we've seen as much as a 70% yield reduction in, in the wheat crop by growing something in that fallow period ahead of wheat. So we really need to be uh, careful in the kind of situation we're in. Um, we've compared growing a true cover crop, or just growing for ground cover, or growing a forage crop. Economically, the cover crop, uh, whether you know it's a legume to maybe try and fix some nitrogen, it's never paid for itself. We've always lost money growing a cover crop. Now, growing an annual forage crop, whether it be hay or graze, can can work and can can and can fit in in this high plains, uh, uh, great plains environment. But we just have to be careful. If we're in those tough, tough years, we need to farm conservatively. That's why we came up with fallow. Uh, you know, if we've got the moisture, if we've got the conditions look good, then we can crop a little more intensively. Are there uh, key dates in the spring and the fall to look at as far as uh, do the soil moisture uh, testing or do uh, check with the weather service to see for sure how much rain you, you've really had a particular uh, spot or if you've, you've kept that rainfall amount uh, as a lot of folks do on, their, on each farm? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's a good, 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 good question. What, what I would kind of, you know, a lot of people are in maybe a wheat fallow or wheat summer crop fallow rotation. And in that fallow year, year ahead of wheat, what I, what I use as kind of a, a guideline is if you take a soil moisture probe out in the spring of the year and that probe goes in the ground a, a foot and a half, and if you look at the National Weather Service and their outlook is favorable, then I would consider growing some kind of a, a forage in the summer, uh, spring annual forage in that system. And I would also, uh, I would like to get that crop terminated by the 1st of June. Uh, so I've got still enough of a fallow period ahead of wheat. Now, if, if you come out in the spring year and there's no moisture in the ground and it's calling for it to be dry, the best thing we can do is keep that, that ground protected, keep the residue intact. If we go out and destroy all the residue trying to plant a crop that doesn't come up, we just make a bad situation worse. So we have to be real careful. Um, the other thing to point out is, every, and every county is different, whether you're for insurance, uh, whether it's even allowed practice. So you want to depend on where, where we're talking. Uh, you, we need to, you need to look at that. Another opportunity time is, is maybe after wheat harvest, in, uh, right after wheat harvest, and then before going into the next summer crop. And in, uh, you know, uh, kind of that 20, 20 inch precip zone, uh, quite often guys will go in and plant a forage sorghum crop right after wheat harvest. And in, and in good years, we don't see a, 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 a too much of an impact on the next summer crop. But in, in dry years, we have seen up to a 50% yield reduction. So that's another opportunity to stick something in there. Um, but you just have to be aware, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. 
Uh, if we've got a lot of good moisture after wheat and are kind of calling for it to be good in the next year, we can look at that. If they're saying this drought, we're in a several year drought and there's no moisture after wheat, then again, we just have to try and farm farm conservatively and, and try to try to uh, outguess Mother Nature. I know, and, and we, we've talked a lot about these cover crops. Let's uh, maybe take a, a little step back, because I'm sure you guys are asking questions. Well, I've heard my neighbors grow turnips, radishes, had some sort of success. Uh, also looking at the right blend or the right mix as far as, does that really make a difference? Or again, I, I don't want to harp on this, but again, it depends on the moisture. It's just like growing a regular crop. you got to have moisture to make it work. Yeah, that, that's, a gr that's another great question, because there is a lot of talk and interest on mixtures. We have a lot of years of data comparing mixtures to single species or two species and we're, we don't see any difference. Uh, whether you grow a ten species mixture or a one species uh, has more to do with soil water and how much cr crop that cover crop or forage crop uses. The more biomass of we, we grow out there the more that crop is going to use. So there's two, two, two things to consider. The more biomass you grow, the more water you're going to use, and that can result in less water than for the subsequent crop. Also, the other thing to, to, to uh, think about is when you terminate that crop. If we, if we grow a, a, a mixture or single species and we, and we shorten that fallow period down to, you know, I, I, like a head of wheat, I recommend 120 days of fallow ahead of wheat. Uh, in kind of that 50 bushel range and less. Uh, if we grow something that's longer, then we're going to see a bigger hit on the wheat yields. All right, and then before we, before we wrap it up, I noticed some of your slides said probably what's worked, what has at least worked the best or provided uh, uh, as far as without some of those exotic crops, if you will, the standards rye and triticale. But with rye, it could bring another issue into itself. Well, and, and you bring... <laughs> That's another good, good, okay, I should probably point out a couple things. Uh, you can get a lot of money tied up in, in growing a mixture. You know, we can accomplish, really, where, where it pens was to grow this crop is, is a forage crop. And so there you want something to grow some decent biomass and, and, and the seed is cheap. We, uh, some of these mixes I've seen, the cost is so high that, uh, you know, it just, it doesn't make sense, and uh, so you know, yeah, uh, a spring oat, spring tree to kale, you, know, uh, you know, maybe forage sorghum. We don't, we don't need to spend a lot of money to accomplish what we're after. Um, and also, the other thing to think about too in these mixes, if we get some kind of exotic mix with a whole bunch of stuff, we we really don't have any herbicide management tools at all. And that's something else to think about. Was you if you plant uh, broadleaf in there, you're not going to be able to control your broadleaf weeds so that's another thing to think about all right uh, John, John Holman that it's fascinating conversation about uh, cover crops we'll continue this as we go down the road and get more updates with research going on here at the uh, Hayes experiment station uh, here at uh, in Hayes Kansas so John Holman cropping system specialist K State research and extension has joined us on the road in Hayes that's the Ag View I'm Ken Rogers